It is a beautiful looking car. However, 2025 is still a couple of years away and you have competitors that already have cars on the market. Do you feel you're coming a little bit too late to the EV game here? Actually, no. Uh, we think our timing is just right because we're going to be having three electric vehicles in the market by 2025. And we're really starting to just see now the adoption rate take off. So we think our timing's good. Good to speak to you, Joy. So you think the timing's good. Of course, the adoption rate relies on being able to produce enough cars. And a lot of car makers are t telling us about the difficulties they're having on that front because of chip yeah. shortages. As cars involve more and more chips, tell us what is the experience at Lincoln Motors right now? Yeah, certainly the a global semiconductor chip uh, shortage is a big deal, right, uh, impacting the industry and certainly impacting Lincoln as well. Uh, we've got teams that are working around the clock uh, to optimize our production. We've taken lots of uh, customer orders. Uh, for Lincoln alone, we took, you know, 3,600 just uh, last month. Um, so we're working really hard. And obviously these electric vehicles are going to take chips as well. And the other piece uh, of the puzzle that we need is the infrastructure for charging. And so we've got a ways to go there for mass adoption as well. So again, that's why we think our timing is good. Well, if we could just dig into chips a little bit more, what is the timeline, do you think? Yeah. When do you start to see those pressures, that shortage on the semiconductor side easing? Well, you know, we're two years into this, uh, and we honestly at the beginning thought we'd be out of this by now. Um, so we think we've got a ways to go. Clearly, uh, the impact of COVID in China right now is going to create another issue with supply chains. Uh, so we don't have an exact uh, forecast for the timing. I wish we did. Uh, but it's a, it continues to be a day-by-day -day situation. Uh, you mentioned infrastructure around charging. That's something we talk about in, in Europe a lot uh, as well uh, and something that perhaps stands in the way of mass adoption in, in many geographies. What's the, uh, what's the secret, Joy? Where does the money need to come from? Uh, who, will be, who will be financing this massive transition that's required in the auto industry? Yeah, in, you know, in North America, uh, we think the administration has a good plan in that area. Uh, they're providing funding and, and support for building that infrastructure out. So we think that's really critical uh, for the nation to get the higher EV adoption. That was really important for the environment, of course. So we think the administration's plan is going to be very helpful in increasing uh, the number of charging infrastructure that we need for mass adoption. All right, Joey, that's here in the U.S. Let's talk about another a market that you have said is key to your future growth, and that is China. Can you just walk us through what you anticipate demand will be like in China, given the EV market there also already very crowded? Yeah, so China has the largest luxury market in the world, and we are seeing a significant increase in electric vehicle sales in that market, and we expect it to continue to go to grow. And again, we think the inflection point there is going to be in that uh, 25, 26 time frame. And, and again, that's why we're, we're targeting in that time that we're really going to see it take off. Obviously, there's a lot of government support uh, for EV adoption there as well, and that'll continue to be key. Uh, we've been looking, as we've been talking, Joy, at, at uh, images of the Lincoln Star, this concept car. It is still a concept car, as Kay Kaylee pointed out earlier. Uh, do you have any sense that this is one that comes to market? You know, this is the global debut of our, our concept car that it really allows us to have a new design language for the future. And you can see how futuristic it is and how, how much beauty is in the light and the different uh, process that we're going through with a larger platform to create just a really flexible uh, vehicle. And so we really do think um, that this is go we're going to take a bunch of cues from this. It's our vision. And we there's a lot of things uh, to love about this vehicle that we do plan to put in our um, electric vehicles that will be coming in 2020 by 2025.